Hello, and welcome back to Factorio. I'm Dorthek, and this is the next episode in our Factorio 0.17 and 0.18 tutorial walkthrough Let's Play. In the last episode, we added some more copper feeding into the green circuit array by adding a second, um, second, by feeding a second line. These are all yellow belts, we're feeding them two red belts, and a red is the equivalent of two yellows, so we're feeding them two yellows. However, you may notice something uh, strange going on here. These guys are running full speed tilt, but these are not. Why is that? Well, because while we are feeding them these two belts, we're only picking up from this inner one. We're not actually getting any benefit out of this one. So how do we fix it? Well, we look and note where, how far the material that's coming in on this belt reaches. And it looks like it's reaching to right here where we're standing. Occasionally a little bit slips through, but mostly it's stopping right here. So what we do is we grab a splitter. And we could use a yellow one, but I have red ones in the inventory. And right after this, we put in a splitter and we do an output priority to the left. And on the other side, we do the same thing. Except output priority to the right. So now... Just as this inner belt runs out, we take material from the outer belt and push it in. Now, we can see that it's reaching two more sets of machines, but not really reaching much past that. No problem. Let's add one more set. Two more sets down. Output priority to the right. Output priority to the left. And now, this incoming copper is being shifted in just as uh, the inner belt is running out. This is a, the basic principle for feeding these machines. Now, between episodes, uh, and between the last scene and this one, uh, I did a bunch of work on this build. Among other things, I... Uh, built some more production for copper plates. Now you'll notice that these are red belts and these are steel furnaces. So each of these is the equivalent of two belts of yellow. And I brought them over here so that we can set up the third column. Now I actually made a mistake because we planned this for six yellow belts, which is three red belts. And I brought in or red belt. Eh, it happens, no big deal. Uh, you'll also notice that I lane balanced these just so that the, the feeding is a little bit more even. I did a couple of other things. Uh, where we built red circuits here, I added a balancer just because there was an uneven feed. And then um, there were some inserters missing on some of the smelting arrays. I fixed that as well. So now we can uh, get quite a bit of production out of this array. Let's bring in one more uh, lane here. And the way we're going to do that is we have six belts. We need three. So we're going to put in a three to six uh, balancer here. But since these six are yellow, it's going to be the equivalent. So I am going to stop this. I'm going to delete a chunk here. All right, we're gonna go to our balancers. We're gonna find a three to six balancer, which is right here. And it's unfortunately not quite convenient, but uh, we will just put it here anyway, that's fine. Now we're gonna upgrade this to a to red. And again, the base robots wanna build it for us, but uh, I don't know that I wanna wait that long. Well, we'll let them. So we're gonna run this in like so. And we're just going to ignore that belt because we don't need it. And now, rather than doing um, things here, we're going to run these belts in like that. Thank you. 
Gonna run into the Oh, that's okay. Because we don't need this. So this can go here. And we can do another one right here. And there's our three. So, you know, we're gonna have to do a little bit of uh arranging. That's okay. Now, you can see that these belts are not being full, but that's all right, because these are the reds. When they feed into the yellows, we will get full throughput from them in the yellow world. Now, we still have this balancer here. We're going to add another one there. Again, output priority to the same side. Same thing here. And now we're going to feed it. That's going to feed in the third belt into the second belt. And we're going to do the same thing after each one of these. So this gives us that. This gives us that. And then here. And here. So we can't really see this because it's going at low capacity here, but when um, when there's a de big demand on the green circuits, we will see it'll first utilize this inner lane. As we run out of this inner lane, the middle lane will feed into the inner and the outer will feed into the middle and it'll make it up so we get full utilization of all of these. Now, we now have six lanes of copper are coming in but we're only feeding it two lanes of iron. That's problematic because we need four lanes of iron. So let's take a look. Where's our iron currently coming from? It's currently coming from up here, from all this. I'd really like to switch it to its own, uh, kind of call it local production. Let's do this because I want to kill this extra lane of um, copper. So we're going to put this in temporarily and say input priority from the left so that it uses up that extra belt and we're going to cut it off on the other end. Uh, so I will meet you over at the smelting arrays in a moment. Okay, here we are. And this is where we're feeding in the copper. So I'm just going to cut this copper off here and let this uh, array drain naturally. Now we're using these to feed through all of this and that's okay. We may use, find other uses for it. In the meanwhile, we'll just terminate this line here. Okay, so we want to do something about iron. Uh, now, iron, as it happens, we have a station here bringing in iron. And this station is currently feeding the iron into the four steel smelters. So we have a choice. We can put in another steel... Um, another iron ore station just for copper, or we could expand this, you know, upgrade these two reds, but I think it's going to work better if we make another station. So we're just going to make a copy. Like so. I'm going to hit shift because I do not want to copy station names. And if I hit shift by default, it will not check that. So create blueprint, although we're not actually using it as a blueprint. And we will put it down right here. It means we'll need to rearrange some things. We're going to need to move this radar um, over here. Uh, let's get power to it. What else is in our way? Uh, this... Another power. Very good. There we are. Now we do not need any of this. We do need connect that. Okay. And this station. 
we need the track. Um, I don't have any rail track on me, so we will need to get that in a moment. But that's all right. So this is going to be base iron plates. No, base iron ore for green circuits. Okay. Uh, I don't have any yellow belts, so we can do this with red. That's fine. In fact, we can just do, run an upgrade planner over all this. Now, I'm actually thinking, where do I want those to come out? Yeah, I guess to the right will be fine. Okay, so after building this, I've realized I'd rather have the um, belts come out the other side. So we're going to delete this. Basically, all of this can go, uh, except this. Yep. Now these we do not need like this. We can... Uh... No, that's fine. So we need one, two, three, four. That'll be perfect. Okay, we do need this here. Can we fit a 4x4 four four balancer into here? Mm, not quite. Not quite. Alright, we'll do it once we've brought it out. Okay, can we make this jump? Yes, we can. Okay, no train. Uh, and we're going to cross all the way over the tracks, which means this is a perfect place for our balancer. Where's the upgrade planner? There it is. Probably going to need more belts um, and such, so but we'll build what we can right now. Now let's see if we can do... Can we jump all the way across? No. But we can do this. Can't quite do that because if I grab the train tracks because they won't let me move just one tile over. They require two tiles. Okay, and there's this convenient forest in the way, because, but I would like the first of these belts to come in right here. Uh, that's too far, but that's okay. There we go. Now we can use the red belts to jump over this stack of copper. And we are out of belts, so I'm going to go grab some more and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. All right, and here we are. I've picked up a whole bunch of supplies so we can complete all this. And we can complete the rails here. Okay. 
And while we're here, let's make a copy of this train. So you make a copy of it by highlighting and holding it shift. And then over here on the left, marking trains. And then I'm going to right click everything that is not part of the train. The car, the locomotive. Nothing else remains. Create blueprint. I now have a train. I'm going to place this train here. And the reason I'm doing that is that the um, wagons are already filtered for iron ore. And it has the, re the blueprint. I just need to change the destination. So I need to add station, base iron ore for green circuit in. And I can copy the same conditions. Empty cargo inventory. Connectivity. Three seconds. And unfortunately, I cannot just change the name up here. So we do no longer need this one. And there's our train for this job. If we wanted a second train, we can make a copy of it and paste it as well. But I think we're good, so I'm just going to let it go. And off it goes to get us some iron ore. And it was not quite in the station, so it came back around. It is full on uh, fuel, so off it goes. Now, we're, we brought in four lanes here, but we didn't really need four. We only needed two right here. Um, we may do something with the fourth one, with the other two. For the moment, we're going to feed one into here, and I'm going to wait until the copper clears out of it. And we're going to feed the other one this way. And we will make a copy of this um, here array. Like so. And put it right next to it. Yep, Cliff is in the way. That's okay. We have Cliff explosives. And we will feed this into here. Now, unfortunately, the base robots have decided to take on a lot of this work but we will help them out. Also, we still have wooden power poles in this blueprint, so we will just manually replace them, and uh, we don't need that middle one. Now I know that I can... Um, Use the upgrade planner to do it, but yeah, it's only a few. And then I can do this. And this. And leave it to the bots to just do the um, inserters, which, you know. I'm not carrying yellow inserters anyway, plus I hate dealing with them. So that's, um, that'll give us this, that. And we will jump this. And you can go somewhere else, like there. bringing me lots more belts. And let's do a belt balancer here. A lane balancer, rather. Just, um, just to make sure. Okay, 
Now here we come into the region of the uh, in circuits. Okay, so once the copper is drained, we will bring the iron into here from this array once we hook it up. And then it will come through in these two lanes. And this will give us two red belts, which is, you know, four yellow belts of iron to feed into to feed into here. So this belt will come in like this. And I'm just going to stick this in here temporarily. So this belt can come in like this. And it'll be red. Until we split it down into the yellow components here. And then this one will likewise be red until we split it into the yellow components there. And then we will figure out where we run out of iron when it's going full blast and fill in some um, splitters there. Now this top lane is going to go away because that's our old um, feed. And then we will repurpose that array for something else. Now, the reason, of course, that this is not running is that we're not doing science, and we're not doing science because we're completely out of things to research without yellow science packs. So that's one of the next things we're going to need to do. Uh, just checking in on our uh, electrical power, you can see the new GUI, which is quite nice because it finally tells us what our max is. We're using around 70 out of a potential 200 megawatts of power, and that's with... Uh, with only two of our six uh, cores in place. So we have plenty of power here. I do want to put in solar at some point because uh, it's, um, if nothing else, so that I can show you how to do solar. We're producing um, solar arrays and accumulators there, but we can put off, put that off for a little bit. There is one thing that I really want to do right now. though. So if we go over to military tab, you can see that we can now make power armor. Power armor is the next upgrade from um, mo the modular armor that we have. So let's go grab some supplies and manufacture it. Okay, so we're not producing them anywhere but here. So we're just going to steal them from um, these arrays. We need how many? Uh, a couple more. There we go. Let's craft a power armor. And we will see in just a moment why we like that. So, this is the equipment grid we currently have. 5x5. Uh, five five. It's, um... It lets us store two roboports, night vision, a couple of batteries, and a whole lot of uh, portable solar panels, and... It's uh, almost enough to keep our robots working. Uh, let's get, uh, let's turn off our logistics because I want to put some stuff in a box um, so we have space. Let's just put some of this stuff down in here. And since our logistics are off, they're not gonna refill this. So if we go to character, we can take the power armor, put that on. First of all, you'll notice that we've gained a bunch more inventory space because the power armor provides 20 inventory size bonus instead of the 10 that we get from modular armor, so it's a whole new row. And second, the grid is much bigger. It's 7x7 seven seven rather than 5x5. Five five. So let's um, open this. We can take all this stuff out and go back to the new one, put it back in. So we have our two personal robot ports, we have two batteries. We have the night vision gear, and we have all of our solar panels, and still tons of room left over. So what can we do with this room? Uh, 
Well, if we look at the crafting menu, you'll see that we now have a lot of things that we can place in our robot. We can put in shields. Uh, energy shields are very, very nice if we are fighting biters in our suit, but they are very power hungry. Uh, and the Mark II even more so. We have batteries. We can put in personal laser defenses against, again, fantastic for fighting, but very energy intensive. Discharge defense, another good one that uh, helps with fighting biters. Belt immunity equipment, I don't usually use it. If you have this and it's on, it, it belts don't move you around. We can add more personal roboports and we can do exoskeletons. And exoskeletons are very nice. And I think that's one of the things we're going to do. Now we will need a couple more uh, electric motors. There we go. Now, I like actually having a lot of exoskeletons if I can, but I don't know that we can power that many. And we need some red circuits and solar panels to make some more solar power. And I wouldn't mind making some more batteries. So let's grab um, some batteries. Now we need a lot more than that. And steel. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I would like to make 5, 10, 15. We have two, so one, two, three more of these. Because that'll let us make two of the advanced batteries, except we don't have low density structures and we're not producing those yet. Never mind. I don't think we can handcraft low-density structures. No, we can. Just take forever. Mm, let's grab some copper. And let's grab some plastic. Oh. So, why did we want exoskeleton legs? Now that note they're fairly big, they take up a lot of space. Because each one of these increases our movement speed by 30%. We can now run faster. Now we can eventually use more exoskeletons. But again, we're using up our power. And then we w I would like a bunch more solar, uh, personal solar panels, which means we need red circuits and solar panels. No problem. We'll grab some red circuits down here. And some solar panels up where we're manufacturing solar panels, over here. Let's take a look at our suit. We'll have ba bigger batteries. Let's make another 10 personal uh, solar panels. I think that's probably as much as we're going to be able to do. And that'll give us, again, a little bit more capacity to do everything we need to do. Okay. So, we accomplished um, a few critical things in this uh, video. We've finally produced enough smelting capacity to completely feed our array, our green circuit array, which we're going to extend more as we need it. We will see how much we need once we turn science back on. And we've upgraded our personal, you know, kind of comfort by, uh, by having the power armor, which lets us run faster, we can stick more battery capacity into it. We can maybe add one more roboport so that we can you have more personal robots. So not, that's not a bad idea. Personal roboport. Just need some gear iron gear wheels. Those are easy. There we go. Let's make one more of those, and um, we'll see how that all goes together in a minute once. Uh, our um, crafting queue completes. Unfortunately, um, the low density structures are very slow to craft. However, we're going to be crafting a lot of them soon because the next thing we're going to do is build the yellow science pack, which as an ingredient has, guess what? Low density structures. And flying robot frames, which are also slow. And blue circuits, which are also quite slow. So 
yellow is of the sciences yellow is probably the most difficult to produce at scale uh, we may have to settle for a very slow production of it at first and uh, upgrade as we can but we're getting there we're getting there so that's completed we now have 18 of these plus two of these let's put them back here and make oh we need more purple as a sign um more blue circuits i want to make two of the advanced batteries because these store 20 megajoules each and these store 100 megajoules each now that's one to five and takes 10 of these but remember the limiting factor is the size of them in the grid and so these are the same size but store five times as much so we'll place that there we'll place the second one right here and now we have a lot more uh, capacity we will place another roboport into here and we will fill in as many of these as we build uh we could make two more so let's do that and that will uh and that will take care of that uh let's dump all the stuff we don't need from our inventory and let the bots take that back We do have night vision, yes. But is that not place? There we go. So, now of course these are discharged completely because when we pull them out and put them back in, it drained them. So, and it's night, so we're not generating any power. What we really want uh, in order to make maximum use of the suit is this right here, portable fusion reactor. This puts out 750 kilowatts, and with one or two of those in the suit, we can run uh, just about anything we want. The thing that goes with it is the Power Armor Mark II, which has a um, grid of 10 by 10, significantly bigger than our current uh, 7 by 7, so we can stick a lot of equipment in that. But that will come later after Yellow Science. So we accomplished quite a bit today. As I said, we upgraded our green circuit to... Uh, raw material production and we built ourselves a power armor mark one which is not only better defense against those pesky biters but also lets us have more bots and more and more power to feed those bots plus exoskeleton to make us run a little bit faster each one of these robots supports uh, 10 robots so we can operate 30 at a time instead of 20 so that's nice we could easily have taken out four solar panels and shoved a fourth one or even a fifth one in, but I'm not sure we would produce enough electricity to make that uh, really viable. All right, so now that you know how to do all that, why don't you go ahead and try one of these yourselves? And as always, don't forget to save.